Melania is notoriously the hardest fight in the game. But when you're doing a level one run, honestly, it, it's not. And that's not because it's not hard. It's because of Godskin Duo. Godskin Duo is so chaotic because there are two bosses. It's really hard to control all the variables and most of the effort for that fight goes into fixing that. For Melania, thankfully, we don't have to do that. She's predictable. She's very difficult, but she's predictable. And if you're doing a level one run, you already know you're going to put a couple hundred attempts into every boss. And in those couple hundred attempts, we can learn all of the subtle ways that she's predictable that we didn't even realize in our normal runs. So this is what I'll call micro cheese. The biggest thing to learn about Melania, if you want to do this slow and measured approach, is what I call recalculation events. Melania doesn't decide every frame or even every hundred frames whether she wants to attack you or not. She only decides at certain trigger moments in the fight. The five that I've found are if you attack her, then she'll decide randomly if she wants to attack you. After she's done attacking you, she'll decide again if she wants to attack you. That's why she often strings several moves together. If you shoot her or cast at her, she'll do a side dodge and then step towards you and then recalculate if she wants to attack you. A note on that one later. If you enter her melee range, she'll recalculate. And after she gets up from a stagger, whether or not you critical striked her, she'll recalculate. So all of this fight, the way that I did it, is composed around reducing the number of recalculation events that we trigger with the end goal of reducing the total number of attacks that she does. So it's not that we learn good dexterity to dodge her abilities, although you still do. It's that we reduce the number of abilities we have to dodge. Now, obviously, we can't just stay away from her and avoid all of these and hope her health naturally goes down of old age. We have to find some way to do damage. So the way we're doing that here is with Glintblade Phalanx, which is one of my favorite abilities in a level 1 run because it does so much poise damage, and critical strikes caused by the staggers by the Glintblade Phalanx. Now, when she gets up from a stagger, remember, is one of the times she recalculates. So that's why you'll see me every time I do a critical strike, I immediately run away from her. I don't try to do any follow-ups because she might immediately enter a waterfowl dance. Now, waterfowl dance, if you can dodge it yourself, more power to you. you you're way past this video. You don't need to watch this. If you're still learning or if you don't want to learn, the way we deal with it here is be far away from her every time she could possibly start a waterfowl dance. And we know all the times that she could possibly start a waterfowl dance because we know about recalculation events now. So if you start far enough away from her, you don't have to dodge the first two out of three waves of waterfowl dance. Being far away means she doesn't hit you. The only thing you have to do is during the third wave, dodge into her twice and it's compared to the rest of waterfowl dance it's a fairly easy dodge to make you'll see it right here first wave second wave third wave dodge into her and then towards the screen so this is the bulk of phase one the Equipment we're using here is Misericord because it's the highest critical strike weapon in the game. For Talismans, we're using Merica's Scar Seal, but you should use Sword Seal if you have it. Radigan's Sword Seal, Two Fingers Heirloom, and Star Scourge Heirloom. And we're wearing the Commoner's Guard for the Faith and the Hyma Glintstone Crown for the Intense and Strength. We've got the Finger Seal with Dragon Ice equipped, and that's specifically for this move in Phase 2 called Scarlet Aeonia, where she just stays still for 10 seconds with a giant AoE around her. So we want a long-range ability that can do as much damage as possible, and it's okay if it takes a long time to wind up or 
wind down because she's not doing anything. So that's what we use Dragon Eyes for, and that's why we have the faith on our gear. You can easily trigger a Frostbite with a single cast of this, as long as you drain your entire FP bar doing it. Just hold down left bumper. So Waterfowl Dance is the exact same in Phase 2. No change. Other than Scarlet Aeonia, the two differences in Phase 2 are this move called uh, Phantom Spirits, where she jumps into the air and sends a bunch of red spirits after you to do various attacks. Similar to Waterfowl Dance, this is a lot easier to dodge if you start far away from her. In fact, if you're far enough away, you don't have to dodge anything. But usually I found I need to dodge these last three thrust attacks. Thankfully, there's no weird delays between them. If you can dodge the third to last, then just keep pressing B and you'll dodge the second to last and the last. The final difference that's worth mentioning for phase two is she'll sometimes jog towards you instead of walking towards you. And this is really the only thing that makes phase two so much longer than phase one. Because you can only barely outrun her with your sprint. If you're even curving your sprint a little bit, you're not going to outrun her. She's going to catch up to you. So you can't run circles around the arena hoping to get more distance between you. You either need to build a straightaway for yourself like this, so that you can get enough distance between you to get a glint blade, fa glint blade phalanx out. And hitting her with that will often just make her start walking instead. Or you need to just keep running away from her. Even if you can't get distance between you, just keep running and eventually she'll start walking. It's been like 50-50 for me whether she jogs or walks. I haven't been able to determine if there's any reason behind one or the other. The other new abilities in phase two are hard. You're going to have to learn them, but... Once you do, there's no magic to it. I think a lot of them, similar to phase one, are a lot easier by just knowing how to avoid uh, recalculation events and staying far away from her as much as you can. Everything just gets a little bit easier. This is definitely a fight of patience. If you are a patient person and you like predictability, this is a strat for you. If not, I don't think this is your jam, and that's fine. We all have different play styles. Do what works for you. This is what worked for me. I saved Melania for the very last thing I did in my level one run. So after this fight, I was done, and I had a big feeling of relief come off my chest. In retrospect, I think she was for my playstyle, only a little harder than Elden Beast and Radagon. Although I expected her to be a lot harder. And I saved her for last because I knew the hardest boss in the game might demotivate me enough to stop my level 1 run, and I wanted to at least beat the game before that happened. But if I knew then what I know now, I don't think I would have cared too much about that because all it takes is knowledge and time a couple hundred attempts and some patience and you'll get there good luck